Good evening. My name is Matt. I'll be your host this evening. That's my tribute to the New York restaurants that are opening back up. Yeah, babies! I'm Money Flippin' Matt Richards, serving up some fresh, hot trivia. And today's special is a savagery. Wow. Delish. I went to a bagel store earlier, and uh, there was a little kid. I was going to get a bagel with some lox and some cream cheese, with little onions and tomatoes and lettuce. Anyway, I'm passing the kid. I said, excuse me, buddy. And he just looked at me and said, I'm not your buddy. I was so crushed, man. <laughs> that was, what a mean kid. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I hope you never have another buddy in your life. I said it through my mask so he doesn't know who I am. Anyway, I hope your weekend's going great. Whether or not your restaurants are open. But remember, if we all follow the safety rules, everything can open much sooner, okay? They call it the novel coronavirus, but it could have been a short story. And most nights, the smart move is staying at home with a trivia quiz. And boy, do we have one for you tonight. A diabolical dozen toughies are lined up and waiting to bombard your brain as always. Woo! Solving them gets you cut in on the prize of $5,000. Oh yeah. Boom, 5K! But maybe you like your thrills a little bigger. And that's why VIP mode is for you. Yeah, buy a VIP ticket and you walk past the velvet rope into a tight circle playing for bigger payouts. We're selling a maximum of 150 tickets tonight and the winners will split $1,250. Do you know how high that pays out when you have some savage questions to thin the herd a little bit? It's a lot, but we'll only go forward if we got 100 in the VIP, all right? Uh, I think right now we're at 71. If you're thinking about it and you got, you're feeling good about yourself, you might win. We'll see, who knows? So, help this happen by picking up a ticket. Invest in your deep memory ah, and join the high rollers. Okay, if you haven't played in a while, you missed our week of saluting amazing charities in Texas. I love Texas. Take a look at everybody we have. Look at this. And when I say we, I mean collectively. All of us, okay? Woo! First, it was the Houston Food Bank, America's largest food bank, feeding so many struggling individuals and families. Then the Greater Houston Community Foundation, collecting donations, helping them go farther. Oh man. Then the, the Austin Community Foundation, building a better Austin today and tomorrow. I'm talking about the Southeast Texas Food Bank, distributing badly needed food in eight counties. And lastly, this is a doozy right here, the Texas Diaper Bank, y'all. Getting lots of essential supplies to families in need. Look at that baby. They got balloons. Wow. Oh man, our thanks go out for all the hard work they're doing. And to you HQDs who donated game winnings or gave directly through their web pages. I hope karma hits you back soon. Yeah. All right. So, are you ready to arm yourself with the facts and march into battle against savagery? Get your sword of reason and sharpen it like uh, Occam's razor, you know, and dullards get to the rear because this will be a clash for the hardiest of heads. Woo! The war on ignorance is a long and thankless one, but it's worth fighting, okay? And you help just by showing up. Now, there's nothing to it, babies, but to age cured, let's do it. Woo woo woo. Which of these is known to orbit the Earth? The sun, Jupiter, or the moon? What's it gonna be? <laughs> the sun, the Jupiter, or the moon? If you guessed the Jupiter, ooh, you are lagging a little behind Copernicus, who first wrote that Earth and the other planets go around the sun, leaving the moon to orbit Earth. It's the moon. 44,608 got it right. Yes! Woo! It's been pretty well settled on for about 400 centuries. Question number two, what you gonna do? Which of these timepieces generally uses a pendulum? Digital clock, grandfather clock, or Apple watch? Y'all got this. What's it gonna be? All right, a couple of these are gonna look weird with a big old swinging pendulum hanging down. But without one, a grandfather clock wouldn't look the same, okay? 45,501 got it right. But listen, hear this. If Apple watches started adding pendulums, uh, they'd be very sleek and minimalist. 
Yeah. And it costs a lot of money for no reason. What's the pendulum do? Oh, it acts as a Wi-Fi router for your friends. What? I'll take two. All right, question number three. Investors who bet on the market declining are named after what? Bear, boar, or bull? Hit me up on, uh, on Twitter if you want my Robin Hood referral code so we can get a free stock. <laughs> All right, this year was a wild ride for these kind of bets, okay? Since declines and recoveries were both out in force, bears love that downward market because they hibernate, I'm assuming. <laughs> That's gotta be why, right? Hibernation? Reggie! <laughs> Reggie's a bear. But 35,000 of y'all got that right. Good job, babies. Q4, knocking on your door. Which of these spices is considered a hallucinogenic? Cumin, nutmeg, or oregano? You know what messed me up? We were doing a bunch of uh, <laughs> charities in the uh, Pacific Northwest, and I, I kept saying Oregon every day. So I read oregano, I was like, Oregano. Oregano. Reggie is gonna come. I see you guys. He was late. You know what it is. He was there. Hey, hey! My bear. What's up, player? Oh. Just something about seeing Reggie just enjoying himself out in the wild like that makes me so happy. And then it makes my nose stuffy a little bit because I have bad allergies. All right, question number five. Oh, wait. It's still question four. Woo! Is it still four? Y'all answered it already? I think they did. Okay. Well, now I'm going to tell you who is right. Here we go. Okay. Small amounts spice up your meal, right? But large doses can spice up your whole day. That's the powers of nutmeg, baby. Nutmeg. Yeah. It's crazy. Woo! Oh, the thing, the, okay. Scroll it on down so I can see the nutmeg again. <laughs> All right, question number five. For the children, except that kid at the bagel shop, you know who you are. You're not my buddy. All right, whatever, dude. I was just, I didn't want to knock you over while I was trying to get to my, my locks. Q5. Which of these is not a real locale in Mississippi? Frog race, hot coffee, or panther burn? What's it gonna be? All right, it's a big state with room for a lot of far-flung town names, okay? But we looked hard and couldn't find us a frog race. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh yeah, 12,290 of y'all got it right. Hot Coffee and Panther Burn are about 150 miles apart with uh, the capital city of Jackson just about dead center between them. Boom. Q6, and it goes a little something like this, yeah. The Mobile Phone Throwing World Championship is held annually in which country? Finland, Greenland, or Thailand? I wanna compete in this. Cause one, but like before I used to host HQ, I would play it and I would get so mad at the question. I'm pretty sure I beat the record for throwing a phone. <laughs> I'm positive. You ever get a savage question, you'd be like, ah! ah! Don't really throw your phone. Okay, whew. The key to getting this one is knowing the world capital of sturdy cell phones. A lot of memes have revolved around the durability of Nokia phones. One of the famous products of Finland, babies. Finland done did it! 15,881 of y'all got that right. Good job. Oh yeah. 110 meters is the current record. Throwing their phones as far as humanly possible, not only in a bid to make themselves feel better, but also in the name of sport. I just, can we just watch that again? I think her form was terrible. You saw that? She was trying to... Throwing their phones what? as far okay, as got, humanly possible, not only in a bid to what make themselves this? feel She's better, but dizzy. also in the name of sport. And then the, the stall before the release? Amateurs. Okay, question number seven. Which of these is a whippermorph? 
but not a cetacean, dolphin, hippopotamus, or killer whale. What's it gonna be? All right, whipamorpha might sound like a dodgy artificial dessert topping, but it's a suborder of the animal kingdom made up entirely of the cetaceans and hippos. The answer. 10,757 got it right. Woo! So-called killer whales are dolphins, but they're both cetaceans. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, here we go. Question number eight. Hope you're feeling great. Which conflict has sometimes been called the Cousins War, Austro-Prussian War, Hundred Years War, or Wars of the Roses? All right, it's still debated what they called it at the time since its popular name came centuries later. Yet, we still call it the Wars of the Roses or just War Singular. 10,879 players got it right. Cousins War is the leading theory, which makes more sense than fighting flowers. All right. <laughs> Woo! All right, let me just get limber. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'll be, let's break the fourth wall a little bit, shall we? I'm looking you dead in your eyes, player. Sometimes words pop up and I go, this is going to be a doozy. Here's one of them. Which of these is an antonym for sesquipedalianism? <laughs> Concision, exogenesis, or prolixity? Woo! Listen, okay? First person to send me a video on Twitter, tag HQ Trivia, of you saying sesquipedalian. What? How the heck? Say it again! Sesquipedalianism? All right, you say that five times fast, I'll send you $20. Tag HQ Trivia, tag Matt Was Funny. Sesquipedalianism, you gotta say it five times really fast. I dare you! She's like, oh, I got this, I'm gonna do it right now. Anyway, let me answer the question. There was a lot of $20 words there, so, you know, eh. Yeah, we want the opposite of sesquipedalianism. <laughs> Words. That's the opposite approach in concision. Literally being concise. 6,979 players got it right. Good job. Oh, sesquipedalianism. Sesquipedalian. Ses sesquipedalianism. Sesquipedalianism? Where'd I put an extra syllable in there? I need glasses. Sesquipedalianism. Ooh, um, let's make a t-shirt. Okay, question number 10. <laughs> Whose recording sessions led to another artist recording That's How I Beat Shaq? Backstreet Boys, Dr. Dre, or Mariah Carey? Who's it gonna be? Sesquipedalianism. Ah, I'm gonna get a tattoo now. Sesqu Yo, what's that mean? Uh, that's sesquipedalianism, bruh. Right there, yeah. <laughs> I got it. I was doing a bit. I was locked up in, uh, in people's phones. Yeah, hard time. JK, I love you guys. This song isn't just fun. It's based on a true story, okay? Aaron Carter somehow beat Shaq at basketball because his brother, Nick Carter, would visit to record a... Uh... All right, <laughs> the maker of this popular cooker seems to like his customers 
It's come out that when Robert Wang puts out a photo of one, it shows the time at 5.20, which in Mandarin Chinese sounds like the phrase for I love you. God forbid he just say it, you know? Oh, yeah! 2,264 of you are moving on to the final question of the game. Question 12. What's that smell? Oh, smells like money. Oh yeah, babies. Oh yeah. All right, Q12. Let's get it. Here it is. The first country to recognize U.S. independence does not have what color on its current flag? Red, blue, or green? You got this. I believe in you. All the way back in 1777, barely a year after we signed off of on nationhood, uh, we got some overseas props from our friends in Morocco. Those guys hoisting the red and green flag without a speck of blue. Blue is the answer. Yeah, babies, we have 1,650 winners of HQ Trivia. Let's go! Oh, yeah. Good job, darlings. Congratulations. Celebrate. Wu-Tang Clan, $40.32. Neatly done. I'd say that was pretty sweetly done for you. Jupiter Brand, J Silver, Urban So, Bing Cow, Real Life D, Ad Adagalia, uh, Chad 1M. I see you, doggy. Ash Aninin, Wilbert Gilb, Best Ken Ever, Scrappy434, QC Panther, Ryan Wistsy, Tudor Rose, Leo P, Ruby Mars. Y'all just killed it. Yeah, you did. Good job, babies. Shout out to all 1,650 winners. That was another gripping game of HQ. I learned a word that I'd never heard before in my life. Sesquipedalianism. Ooh. This feels good. Sesquipedalianism. All right. Congrats to everybody who prospered. And if you didn't, that's what tomorrow's for, okay? The more you play, the better you get at it. So come on by again. It, it, is, it is the highlight of my day to be here with y'all. Once again, we salute all those Texas charities we covered this past week and all of you who tossed them a little love or even dug deep to donate what you could, you know? That's just plain making the world a better place. Yeah. Until I see you again, this is Money Flippin' Matt Richards saying, if good news ever happens again, do you think we'll recognize it? I don't even know what it looks like anymore. Woo!